All right, day two, going back to the camera job, and this will be the last day. We have a couple cameras to mount outside and a few cables to run. Then when I get back home, we will do all the configuration and locking down these camera ports to the MAC address. So let's get going, but first, let's say bye to the girls. You know you're supposed to run on that, Mocha. So we got the cable coming out of the electrical room, but we need to get it up into the roof. So Jay's just gonna walk it off onto the end of the hallway, then we'll cut it to length. After that, we'll use our fish sticks or fish rods, whatever you call it, and then we'll run it through the roof to get to the camera to the back corner. Now the cable's out of the electrical room and Jay is taping it to the fish rods. What we have to do next is just put it into the ceiling right there. These fish rods are fiberglass and they are glow in the dark, so it does make it easier to see in the ceiling tiles if you need to. So what will happen, we'll pop a couple ceiling tiles and then push it down. And these go about 15 feet if you have all three parts on it. So the cable is now to the final location. We're going to be putting the camera in this back corner. Each one of the floors has three cameras and they're all the exact same. So what I'll do while Jay's going up there and putting a hole in the tile, I will put an RJ45 end on the cable. We'll also put that rubber grommet that comes with the G4 bullet cameras to prevent dust from going in the ethernet jack. This is the piece of Cat6. We need to put the grommet on that comes with the camera. We'll just slide it on top and push it through. With the grommet on the end of the cable, I'm just going to score the sheathing of the cable with my scissors. I'll cut off the pull string and then the divider in between our pairs. Now today we're going to be terminating in T568B. So what we're going to be doing is our white orange and then orange. We'll use our white green next. Solid blue and then white blue and then solid green and then white brown and then brown and what I'm doing with my fingers I'm just making the pairs straight so it's easier to get into the RJ45 end and now with the conductor straight I'm just going to cut them all level and here I have an RJ45 end this is a cat 6 end and we'll just put it on our conductors we'll push and then we'll get the jacket right inside of the RJ45 and then get our crimping tool now with the jack and our crimping tool, all we need to do is crimp down. We tested the cable with our Fluke Link IQ tester. A full video will be coming on that, but now we're just gonna put a wire wrap label. But what I'm using is the Brady BMP 21 Plus. So I'm just gonna call this one Cam 15 because that's where it lands on the patch panel. And then we'll press print. All right, now that we see it's Cam 15, we'll pull the sticker off. Then we'll stick the label onto the cable and wire wrap it around. Now you can see that the label is on the cable. We're gonna get this installed into the camera. Jay's already put the mount on into the ceiling tile and now he's putting the mounting arm for the camera. The camera is now installed. We have one more inside doing the exact same thing, running the cable to the corner and then mounting the camera and we have a few outside. Now we're doing the outside cameras and we have three to do. These are the old cameras. They did have back boxes on them. We're gonna have to take those off and put the G4 bullets right on the brick. There's not a lot of back box options for the G4 bullets. Hopefully Ubiquity comes out with some. So it will just be in the brick and you'll see us taking these cameras down and putting the new ones up.
and the camera job is now completed. So let me explain a few things here. A lot of people ask me why I add two patch panels and the reason for it on most switches, the ports are on the right hand side. So for cable management, I could just use these six inch patch cables and I could do half of the patch panel up top and then half down below. You could always get one foot patch cables or two foot patch cables, but this is how I prefer to do it. Another question I'm gonna get is why did I label this firewall switch in UMBR? If somebody non-technical is coming onto site, it would be a lot easier for me to tell them unplug the firewall or unplug the UMBR if there is a label on it. And then we just labeled camera one to 12 here and then 13 to 24 if we do expand. There is the ISP link and then this is for our UNBR until we get that DAC cable. On the bottom we did have a solid blank plate but I changed that out because it was a little bit scratched and now we put this vented one. So the next thing we need to do, all this is currently on the same network. I need to go back to my computer and then we'll do some configuration, putting these on a different camera network as well as locking it to the MAC address. Okay, so now I'm back home and we need to get these cameras configured into their own network. There is no Wi-Fi at this site, so the only network we'll be creating is a camera network. So we'll go over to settings wheel and then we'll click on networks. Here we can see that the camera system, that's just the name of the router, and then I'll create a new network. I'm gonna call these cameras. I'm gonna uncheck auto scale and then I'll give it an address of 192.168.20.1. We'll go to manual and then I'll give it a VLAN of 20 as well. And then we're gonna apply the network. Now going over to my devices, we could see my camera system, which is the UDM SE. And then we could see the USW 24 PoE and all the cameras and the MVR. So what we need to do, we need to put all of these cameras and the MVR on that new VLAN that we created. So we'll go into the switch and then go to the port manager. Now that we're in the port configuration interface, all of these ports are gonna be on our camera network. The only one that will be set to all or we create a custom profile is the one that's linking between our UDMSE and the switch. So what I could do, I could check off all of these ports and then put them on the VLAN. So we could just start hitting all the ports. Now that they're all selected, we could go down to the port profile and then put them on the camera network and apply the changes. What I do after this, I power cycle all of the cameras so they get an IP quicker. I wish Ubiquity would put in the function where if we select multiple ports that we could power cycle them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and then power cycle the ones that have PoE. Now we can see all the cameras and the UNVR are in the new camera network on 192.168.20.x. The next thing we need to do is create some firewall rules so they can't talk back to the default network. So I'll go into my settings wheel. We'll go to firewall and security. Then I'm gonna create a new rule. The first rule that I'll do is under land in and that will be allow established and related. We're gonna be accepting this. And we're gonna scroll down, go to advanced, then manual and select match state established and match state related and press apply changes. After that, we're gonna do a drop in valid state. So we'll go back to land in and call it drop in valid state. And this time the action will be to drop in the same thing. We'll go to advanced manual, but this time we'll do match state invalid. Now we need to create a group for all of our IPv4 private addresses. So we'll go into profiles, we'll scroll down and then we'll go to port IP group and create a new group. Here I'm gonna call this RFC 1918 and it's gonna be an IPv4 address slash subnet. The first one will be 192.168.0.0 slash 16. The second one will be 172.16.0.0 slash 12. And the last one will be 10.0.0.0 slash 8. And then we're going to apply the changes. Now going back to firewall and security, we're going to create a new rule. This will be under LAN in again. And I'm going to call it allow default to all VLANs. So we need to have our default network be able to get everywhere because that's where our Ubiquity gear is sitting on. So we're going to have an action of accept and this time the source is going to be a network of default and the destination will be that new group that we created which is rfc 1918 and we're going to apply the changes we're going to add one more rule to the lan in and this will be called block inner vlan routing so our camera network won't be able to get to our default network so that's what i'll call it block inner vlan routing the action will be to drop this time the source is going to be a port ip group of rfc 1918 and so is the destination and then we'll apply the changes we need to do a couple other groups so that our camera network can't access the udm se interface and get to our firewall so we'll go back to profiles then port ip group and we'll create a new port ip group this group i'll just call block cameras to gateways and it's going to be a type of ipv4 subnet and then i'm just going to put in the default networks ip and then we're gonna add that. If you have more than one network, you're just gonna add the gateways of each of those networks to follow this rule. The next group I'm gonna create is just the camera gateway. 
And this is going to be the IP of the camera network. So 192.168.20.1 and we'll press add and then apply changes. And the last one we're going to create is a port group that will have HTTP, HTTPS, and SSH. So the first port will be 80. The second port will be 443 and the third port will be 22. Now we have the port groups created, we need to create the firewall rule, and this time it's gonna be done under LAN local. And I'm gonna call it block cameras to default. The source is gonna be a network of our cameras, and then the destination will be that port group that we created of block cameras to gateways, and then we're gonna apply the changes. So now the cameras can't get to the default gateway of 192.168.1.1, but we could still get to our own gateway at 192.168.20.1, and we don't want that. So we'll create a new rule, it will be done under LAN local, and this will be called block cameras to UDMSE. The action will be drop, the source will be a network of our cameras, and then the destination will be a port group, and this will be our camera gateway, and then that port group of HTTP, HTTPS, and SSH. So now we'll do one more thing for security, and that's gonna be MAC address locking. So if somebody went up to your camera, pulled it down, and plugged their laptop in, it wouldn't work because it would have a different MAC address. So I'm just gonna do this camera here, which is the second floor elevator. We can see that it's on port 11 on the switch, and I'm gonna copy the MAC address down, which you can't see because my face is in front of it, and we'll go to port 11. Now with the port selected, we could see that we have a MAC address list, and I could copy and paste that MAC address in there. Now with the MAC address added, if we put any other device on it, this port won't work. This is great for security if people could physically get to your devices. But you need to remember, if you have to switch out that camera and put another camera in to turn this off. Now into Unify Protect, the defaults for the cameras are pretty good. There isn't much that I would adjust, but on our front door camera, we will adjust the motion zones and the smart detection zones. You can increase the frames per second on the G4 bullets as well, and it will use up a bit more hard drive space. I'll show you how to do that. We'll go to recording mode, and then we could go to recording quality. Down below, it's only at 24 frames per second, but we could do this high frame rate mode and click that on. And I believe that brings us to 48 frames per second. Now with high frame rate mode on, we do have 48 frames per second. But for this particular camera, I want to change the smart detection zones as well as the motion zones because we don't need to see the road. So if we go under detections and privacy, we could edit the motion zone. For every single Ubiquiti camera, the default for the motion and the smart detection, if you have G4 cameras, is the full lens. But we're not gonna want this road right here. So I'm just gonna drag the corner down, and we're just gonna want our property over here. So that's great, and we'll press save. I'm gonna do the same for the smart detection zone as it's capturing everything. So we're just gonna drag the corner down and only capture our property. So this way we don't get a ton of alerts for all these vehicles that are passing by. Now one quality of life change that I make for our live view is under the settings. So if we go to our settings wheel and scroll down, we could see this low latency video. And what this does, if you have a lot of cameras, sometimes they buffer. But with low latency video on, it does help to reduce that. And the last thing we'll touch on is giving people access to your system. If you need to add other people, all you need to do is go into the Unify OS for your console and then add a new admin. If they have a Ubiquiti single sign-on, just put in their email address and it will send them out an alert to join this NVR. You can also do local access for this. And that's going to be it for this video for the Unify Protect installation and configuration. If you have any questions about this video or how I do things, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.